Hi, Steve at Drumdial, and this is the second part of our timpani rebuild project. I'm making these videos because it's very important to me to fully understand how the timpani works mechanically to get the best possible tuning. So let's get started with day four and get working on stripping the frame and building an oven. After removing most of the finish with paint stripper, I soda blasted the frame with heavy grip baking soda. The parts needed to be soda blasted to expose any cracks and remove the residual paint. This isn't sandblasting, that's too abrasive. The speed blast gun is not too heavy and uses an inline air dryer to prevent clumping of the soda grains. Now this isn't your regular household baking soda, it's much coarser and more granular. It's inexpensive and it works great. My parts are all prepped and ready for the next step, but first, I'll need to build an oven. I started by building a 4 foot by 4 foot frame enclosure using standard metal studs from the hardware store. I joined the corners like this and screwed them together with self tapping sheet metal screws. Then I lined the inside of the oven with aluminum roll, thin sheeting like this. Next, I filled in between the frame's exterior with 6 inch thick building insulation. This is standard off the shelf hardware store stuff. Then I held it all in place with wire mesh, inexpensive and you guessed it, all from the same hardware store. These pictures show the final build of the oven. Lots of work, but easy to do and very necessary to powder coat our timpani frames. Unfortunately, I ran out of time today to completely finish the oven. I wanted to add sheet metal to the outside and add a short stand with wheels. And also add a control panel for the thermostat and on off switch. I'll have to add that at a later date to put the oven into full time service here at the shop. In the meantime, this will work perfect for my needs. I set the heating elements on aluminum trays to hold them off of the oven floor. This is the thermostat controller and it's easy to wire as a light switch. It's inexpensive, works great, and is very reliable. All of the parts have been wiped down to remove any residual soda dust. Next, I'll need to plug any areas that I don't want to get powder coat in. This is critical for later assembly, but makes it easier to get full coverage. This frame bowl hoop is steel and is the only part that can rust, so it's very important to completely powder coat the entire ring, holes and all. The base, crown and struts are all aluminum and I still want to be sure to get plenty of powder coat into the exposed nooks and crannies of the base. This is an original factory repair that filled a small drilling void in the casting. All of the struts needed some repair, but fortunately, I didn't find any cracks or severe damage. I had to smooth and fill the dents with a conductive aluminum epoxy filler. The insides and edges all looked great. This strut is all wired for hanging in the oven. The critical holes are plugged. Nice, smooth finish. These are a couple of the repairs from deep gouging and the dented outer edge was sanded to make it cosmetically match the other struts. Lastly, I'm test fitting all of the parts in the oven for a nice easy bake and transition. I don't want to have to repowder coat any of these parts. The powder goes on black but will turn to a copper color in the oven. The base is the largest and heaviest, so it needs to be powder coated first. Next, I'll powder coat the struts and crown. I'm wearing a bunny suit because the powder is very messy, like black talcum powder. Powder coating works by charging the powder with static electricity and then baking it in an oven to cure it. The powder is positively charged and a very light air pressure lightly blows the powder from the gun to the negatively grounded metal part. The powder is drawn to and sticks to the parts like a magnet. I'm on my last part now. I'll fit this in the oven, get it baked, and then start on the next 28 inch frame. 
This is going very quickly and I want to get both frames reassembled today. I'm glad we got an early start this morning and didn't wait on completely finishing the oven. This is going so smoothly. I'm liking how easily the powder is going on. These inexpensive powder coat guns work great, are easy to use, and the only maintenance needed is blowing out the gun when you're finished. After powder coating, the timpani frame struts, bases, and crowns are baked and cured in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. Okay, let's take a quick peek inside the oven. I'll only open the door a little bit so I don't let all the heat out but you can still see one of the heating elements glowing red hot. This oven is working extremely well and the results have been perfect. The finished base, frame ring, struts and crown are complete and are ready for reassembly. You can see the struts here and the copper vein color came out very nice. Because we used a copper vein powder, we also applied a clear powder coat protectant to keep the metalized powder from tarnishing over time. Here I've attached the pedal arm assembly to the base. I've put the final touches on the heel pad, the old one was completely worn out. The new heel pad will add a nice touch to the shoe base portion of the timpani frame and also helps to stop unwanted vibration. The heel pad is bolted to the bottom of the base and I'm now ready to start on the rest of the assembly. This is really starting to come together now. Shown here are the linkages assembled inside the struts. Note the small white felt strips just to either side of the linkage points. Next, we attach the struts to the bowl hoop with the original bolts, lock nuts, and curved washers. After testing to make sure that the linkages at the bowl hoop are still moving freely, I'm ready to attach the base. Even though I've attached the base here, I've left the bolts loose until I've made sure that I have perfect alignment. It's critical that the frame is nice and straight. This ensures perfect tuning throughout each timpani's entire range. The fine tuning wheel has been assembled with the straightened and polished spider arms or spokes. From this angle, you can clearly see the new pull rod. The fine tuning wheel is installed and the spider arms have been screwed into their corresponding linkages and locked in place. This is a great feature that allows all of the arms to pull evenly for tuning adjustment across the range of the drum. These are the casters from the 28 inch drum, still in okay shape, but I decided to replace both sets of casters with matching ones. The gray rubber wheels look good and make moving these drums a breeze. It's very important to test all of the linkages for binding or sticking at these points. I like to use a dry lube like graphite or a very small amount of lithium grease prior to final assembly. For easy access, be sure to get every touch point while the bowl is out of the frame. All of the rollers and the linkage assemblies should move freely and a small amount of dry lube or lithium grease can go a long way to help with that. The locking nut is tight and note the felts to either side of the upper linkage on the inside of the strut. I've updated and replaced all of the felts, like this one here. The felts help to protect the bowl and also helps to stop sympathetic vibrations, you know, those annoying buzzing sounds. I have some time left in the day, so I'm going to get a head start on finishing the bowls with black cobalt paint so that I can do some more heat testing. I've tested the heat characteristics of a few different types of timpani bowls in the past 
And this black cobalt paint will not only conduct heat, but will also act as a nice base coat for the silver mirror that I intend to apply later. It's important to apply this type of paint in thin layers. I could have matched the original factory bowl color or even used a different color from a standard can of spray paint. Then I could have finished a day or two early. But I wanted to do something different, something special for this video and also for my own testing curiosity. So I used the black cobalt as my base coat. The black cobalt paint is used in rooftop solar water heaters because it absorbs and holds heat very well. Now the fiberglass bowls that I'm using are minimally conductive and will still transfer a little heat. They'll be able to transfer the heat much better, especially after this type of coating is applied. They'll never be as good as copper, but we can certainly get close. If you watch closely, I'll spin the bowls faster and faster as I apply the paint in order to get as high a gloss finish as I can. The finish will get better and better as more paint is applied. Now, I have to be careful not to apply too much paint all at once, otherwise the paint will run and it'll have to be sanded, buffed, and refinished all over again. If I apply too little, the paint will haze over and I really need the high gloss finish for the mirror coating that I will apply after the base coat is dried overnight. After collecting the temperature data on the black cobalt base coat, I'll start prepping the bowls for a final silver mirror finish coating in part three of our Tempany overhaul series. That's right, in the next video, I'll show you how to put a real silver mirror finish on your Tempany bowls.